Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl and today I'm here to showcase some of the brand new goodies from Not Too Shabby and make a couple alternatives using the August 2023 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. It is time for the new quarterly release from Not Too Shabby and it is all about fall. In front of me are some of the items from the release, but there are many more, so make sure to go check it out. I have a link to the store in the description box below, and also their YouTube channel so you can see videos about more of the products. Today, I'll be making two quick and easy cards using the August 2023 sheet load printable, but I'll be switching it up just a little bit. To get started, I'll be using the I Love Fall die set, the new Trip to the Orchard paper pad, and Pretty Pumpkins with the coordinating dies. I also am going to add a little bit of sparkle with the glittery enamel dots that match the papers in the new release. Now as I get into the process, I will tell you about other products and tools that I use, but as always, if you ever have any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I chose two papers from the paper pad and I picked out ones where the front and the back would look good together on a card. Then like I mentioned before, I'm going to be using the layout from the August 2023 sheet load of cards, but I'll be switching it up a little bit from landscape to portrait, so I'll be using the single card dimensions for my cutting. To do this, make sure if your paper has an orientation, you think about that before you make your first cut. I'm going to start by cutting 2 inches off the left, and that strip will get left at 6 inches tall. Then the piece that's left is already the 4 inches wide, so I'll cut that to 5 and a quarter inches tall. And then there's that little scrap left over at the bottom that I'll show you later how I'm going to use it so we do not have any scraps today. And this will end up getting me 2 complete cards in the end. I cut my card bases and mats off camera since that's basically the same as the original process video, which by the way, if you're interested in downloading that sheet load of cards for yourself or seeing the process video, I will have those linked in the description box below. For the pattern papers, I just flipped over the 2 inch by 6 inch strip for the coordinating pattern and then these get placed on the 2 and a quarter by 6 inch tomato soup cardstock mats. Just like in the sketch, I'm going to place these onto the pattern paper at an angle and you can definitely decide how much of an angle and which way you want it to head before you adhere these down. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the sketch, angling it from the top left to the bottom right. Now there is that little bit of hangover, so once those two pieces were in place, I just brought in a pair of scissors and quickly snipped off the excess. These two pieces then got adhered center on those card bases and let me know if you also flip your papers and card bases around when adhering together. I always find it easier to get them centered that way. Now the scraps from earlier will make their reappearance and I just added adhesive to the back of these and place them on the bottom of the inside of the cards. It's just a great way to add a little more decoration and get those scraps used up. It's time to start on the focal points and for that I brought in the Pretty Pumpkin stamp set and I'll be using the pumpkin with the vine around it. To help me keep my coloring in those lines I will be heat embossing so I have VersaFine Claire Nocturne Black ink and some clear embossing powder and my Tailored Expressions Anti-Static Powder Tool. 
I did cut my scrap of cardstock in a square because I'm going to stamp a pumpkin in one corner and then rotate it 180 degrees and stamp it in the corner again. I did make sure that the ink was nice and juicy so I inked both of these and stamped them twice and then I got that clear powder poured on there making sure to hit all the black inky lines and once I did that I brought in my heat tool and melted the powder. As always, this is just like magic to me. To color the images, I brought in three Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers, and I tried to pick colors that would match the paper. I will list those individual colors in the description box below. To get started, I'm going to cover the entire pumpkin in the lightest shade of the orange marker. I do usually try to go in little circles when I do this. And then once that is all covered, I'm going to add the shading by going to the dark end of the marker. And I use the lines that are kind of already there and put in where I think some shadows might be. Then using the mid-tone marker, which is the center section of this, I'm going to pull in the dark shading just a little bit. Then I go over the whole section that I've just shaded with the light marker, and that just helps everything blend out nicely. You'll notice I started out by coloring the whole pumpkin orange, but then when I'm doing the shading, I do do it section by section. You could just find a rhythm that was good for you. Once the pumpkin was colored in and shaded, I used a brown marker for the stem and a green marker to color in the little vine. I colored the second pumpkin in the same exact way, and then using those coordinating dies that I have, I cut each of those out. For the sentiment and to finish off the focal point, I brought in the I Love Fall die set along with a couple scraps of cardstock. I will be cutting the letter I and the word fall from the turquoise. I thought it pulled out some of those turquoise pumpkins from the background paper. And the heart will be cut from tomato soup cardstock. After cutting those pieces, I realized that my sentiment and the pumpkins would need a little help standing out from that background pattern paper. So I also cut a couple vellum ovals while I was off camera. Speaking of off camera, that is where I put my focal points together. Gluing down all of the little pieces and getting them straight was a little fussy, so I just took my time and didn't worry about filming it. But I will show you here as a look at them, and you'll notice my pumpkins I put on the vellum with some foam tape, just to give the card some dimension. Then I'm going to use Barely Art glue and add adhesive behind the pumpkin and the letters and the heart and get that centered onto my card front. I did give these about five minutes to dry and then I'm going to finish off the card with a little sparkle. To do that, I brought in those new enamel dots from Not Too Shabby, and I chose the orange and green to kind of match the pattern papers, and I put five on the front of each card, two to the top left of the pumpkin, and three below the word fall. Once I had the enamel dots in place, I did decide to decorate the inside a little more off camera, and to do that I used the same pumpkin from the front, but I did a stamp off of tomato soup ink and stamped it in the center right above that strip of pattern paper. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these two I Love Fall cards using the new release from Not Too Shabby. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to check out those links in the description box below to see the rest of the products and the Not Too Shabby videos. And until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.